Page 1 of Vector Applications, Problems Involving Vector Operations. Okay, so in this diagram here, we have uh, two tugboats, which I'll mark in blue, pulling on a big ship marked in red. And each of the tugboats pulls with a force F1 and F2 in different directions. And uh, the net force, or like the the cumulative force on the ship uh, actually goes in neither of those two directions. It's kind of an addition of vectors which takes place and then it gives you the, uh, the red uh, vector in the middle here. So the ship actually gets pulled kind of to the center of the two tugboats, not in the direction of one of the particular tugboats. And the way you find the direction of the red vector is you uh, you add the vectors up just like we've done in the past and so you take force of vector 2 and then the force of vector 1 you add them end to end and then you get the red vector okay so the resultant force is the, this red force which um, which is the sum of the other two forces so you could say that the uh, resultant force is equal to F1 plus F2 and both of these are vectors force 1 and force 2 vectors okay I'll write it off here to the side so you can see that there's an arrow above each one. Okay, an athlete can normally run with constant speed 6 meters per second. Using a vector diagram to illustrate this, uh, each situation, find the athlete's, athlete's speed if he is assisted by a wind of 1 meter per second from directly behind him. Okay, so if you run 6 and you also have a... Um, wind speed of one to help you in the same direction then the total force is going to be seven right and then what if you run six and you're running into a headwind so that means the the wind pushes back one then basically you um you're moving at five instead Okay, so the resultant force of the first one is 7. The resultant force for the second one is 5. Okay. 3. A boat needs to travel south at a speed of 20 kilometers an hour. However, a constant current of 6 is flowing from the southeast. Use vectors to find the equivalent speed in still water for the boat to achieve the actual speed of 20. B. The direction in which the boat must head to compensate for the current. Okay, um, this is kind of like our investigation, Escape from Alcatraz, okay, where you want to go in a specific direction, but the current's taking you in a different direction, okay? So in this case, the resultant vector, which we're going to draw in purple, we know we need to go south at 20 kilometers an hour. However, the current uh, is at 6 and it's going from, it's flowing from the southeast. South, from the southeast. So southeast is in that direction, okay? So if it's flowing from the southeast, then that means it's going um, like that, and it's six long, okay? Um, use vectors to find the equivalent speed in still water for the boat to achieve the actual speed of 20 kilometers an hour in the direction. So basically they're saying find the, um, find the uh, vector that the boat needs to go both direction and magnitude and it needs to go that far can you see because like the 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 current's going to push it six uh in the northwest direction and then it needs to make up for that plus it also needs to uh go 20 south right and so uh let's see if we can write that in uh in kind of an equation so we could say um, let's see, the, the boat's uh, vector um, if we add that to the current and uh, I'm going to write the current in um, components, okay? So if the current is 6 in the 45 degree direction then this is going to be 6 divided by the square root of 2, and this is going to be 6 divided by the square root of 2 because that's, you know, uh, what a 45 degree triangle 
has in proportions, okay? So um, basically that's going to be 4.24. So this is going to be 4.24. And this is going to be 4.24. Okay, and then I'm going to put uh, here in, in component form, I'm going to put, let's see, negative 4.24 and positive 4.24 for the current. And that will give me the resultant vector, which is in the x direction 0, in the y direction negative 20. Okay, and so I'm going to replace now the, the, uh, the boats vector with x and y. Okay, and then we can write an equation. We could write that um, x minus 4.24 is equal to 0. So that means x should equal to 4.24. And y plus 4.24 is equal to negative 20. So y is actually equal to negative 24.24. Okay? So um, those are the, that's the red vector in component form. Now, it does want it in uh, magnitude and direction form. So now we're going to do another trigonometry problem. Let me move this out of the way here. Okay. And then I'm going to uh, say, okay, we got this triangle. And it's 4.24 here, and it's negative 24.24 here. What's the hypotenuse? Okay. So... Uh, we could uh, use the tangent, okay, to find uh, maybe that theta right there. Um, let's see, that would be negative 0.24, negative 24.24 divided by 4.24 negative 5.72 is the uh, tangent ratio and then we're going to take the inverse tangent of that so inverse tangent of that negative 80 degrees okay so this, uh, this angle here is 80.1 degrees, all right? And so the direction uh, that is part B, we would want to say, um, let's see, like 80.1 degrees uh, south of east, okay? And the magnitude, we would use Pythagorean's theorem. So we would have... Uh, the square root of 4.24 squared plus um, 24.24 squared. And we'll get uh, 24.6. So uh, the hypotenuse here is 24.6. Me, um, kilometers per hour. So that's the answer for A, and the answer for B would be 80.1 degrees uh, south of east. That would be B. Okay? All right, number five. An airplane needs to fly due east from one city to another at a speed of 400 kilometers per hour. However, a 50 kilometer an hour wind blows constantly from the northeast. Okay, so they need to fly um, let's see, due east at 400. And the problem is the wind is blowing from the northeast at 50 kilometers an hour. These are just physics problems if you've done vectors in physics. Um, how does the wind affect the speed of the airplane? Well, it slows it down. 
<laughs> okay. In what direction must the airplane head to compensate for the wind? Okay, so this is very similar to the last problem. It's just a different shaped triangle, right? So uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to break this uh, the the wind vector into component form. So instead of uh, 50 on the hypotenuse, we're going to say uh, it's 50 divided by square root of 2 for each leg. 35.4 for both here and this side also, okay? Um, so the, the, the wind vector in component form is actually going to be negative uh, 35.4, negative 35.4. And then the, uh, the red vector, which is the airplane uh, speed not considering the wind is, uh, we don't know yet, so we're going to put X and Y. And then uh, the purple uh, is the, the resultant force, which is 400 in the X direction and zero in the Y direction. So now we can construct two equations here, negative 35.4 plus X equals 400. So X is going to be equal to 35.4. Okay. And then y is going to be negative 35.4 plus y equals 0. Oh, I'm, uh, this x is not 35.4. It's uh, 435.4. 435.4. And, and y is going to be just equal to 35.4. Okay. So now we can draw a new uh, red triangle where... The, hypot uh, the uh, x is 435.4, and the y is 35.4, and the hypotenuse we don't know yet. Okay, so the hypotenuse we can find using Pythagorean theorem like we did before. So uh, it's going to be um, 35.4 squared plus... 435.4 squared, oops, 435.4 squared okay, enter 436.8. So the hypotenuse here is 436.8. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay. So the the speed of the airplane is going to be 436.8, and then the direction that it goes. Let's find uh, the the inverse tangent of 35. Point Four. Is it 35.4? 35.4 divided by 435.4. 435.4. And we'll find the inverse tangent of that. And it gives me 4.65. That's the so I guess theta, which is the inverse tangent of that, is 4.65 degrees. Let me just make sure I'm in degree mode. Yeah, I am. Okay. So that so it's 4.65 degrees. I would say it's north of east. The other way you could do it is you can measure it from north. You could say a certain amount of degrees. Um, measured from north, okay? In both 2D and 3D geometry, we can determine the equation of a line using its uh, direction and uh, any given point or any fixed point on the line. That makes sense, right? In the past, when we do 2D geometry, 2D two-dimensional lines, 
if we know the y-intercept, which is a point on the line, and we know the slope, which is its direction, we know we've defined the line. And uh, in three-dimensional geometry, it becomes a little bit more difficult because we cannot say y-intercept or some simple concept like that because it's in three dimensions. But if we know a point on the line and we know the direction, which is a little bit more complicated to express in three dimensions, then we can define the line. And that goes for any uh, dimension because once you start talking about math, you don't, you're not limited anymore to three dimensions. You can do vectors in many dimensions, five dimensions, ten dimensions, and you can still define a direction, you can still define a specific point, and it still means something in math, okay? Maybe it doesn't mean something in the physical world, but it does in math, okay? So uh, there's a general equation for a line, which kind of looks like y equals mx plus b, but it's the y and the x are replaced by vectors, okay, and scalars, okay? So uh, now we say, okay, well, in this equation here, what we're saying is A is any fixed point on the line, and B is the direction of the, um, of the line. Then you can use T kind of to um, adjust the size of the direction vector. So here's your A, and then here's your B, and then you can use T to like say, oh, I'm going to make B really small, or I'm going to make B really big, and then you kind of like adjust exactly where the point's going to be all along the line, okay? So uh, t is a scalar, and t can be any real number, okay? Any real number, rational or irrational, okay? And because t can be any real number, you can make, uh, the, you can make that expression r equals a plus tb define any point on the line, okay? So the vector equation of a line in two dimensions in component form is, and then so you have x, y, which is any point on the line, and then you have the initial point, which is a, we'll say a1, a2, plus t, which is the scalar we talked about can be any real number, and then we say we just multiply the scalar times b1, b2, which is the direction in component form. Okay? And that's it for page one.